Modern desktop processors can be tuned and tweaked in many various ways. Hardware enthusiasts and PC gamers will tweak different aspects of their CPU to extract as much performance out of their hardware. In particular, modern Intel CPUs can have their cache or ring clock tweaked. So what I wanted to find out was how much benefit does one get from overclocking their cache. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. This is a video I've been wanting to make for a while now. It's because it's been a question on my mind that I haven't been able to find a clear answer for. That is whether overclocking the ring clock or your cache on the Intel CPU can impact gaming performance. I also wanted to see how much your FPS can scale with different configurations. You can tweak your modern Intel CPU in all sorts of different ways from overclocking P cores, E cores, and ring clock. And if you have a CPU such as the 14900K or a 13700K, then you might have noticed an option in your BIOS to tweak your ring frequency or ratio. Now if you're wondering what this does, it essentially controls the speed of your cache and memory controller. The higher the ring frequency, the faster the processor will be able to transfer data between its cores, the cache, and the memory controller, and in theory that should help boost performance. But we've all seen when doing actual real world testing, benchmarks may not actually scale linearly if at all. So that's what I had set out to do. I bench marked 13 games with different ring ratio configurations to see how much performance will scale and also to see if pushing the ring ratio beyond stock would provide any tangible benefits to the user. Before we jump into the benchmarks, I wanted to do a rundown of our test system specs. For the CPU, we've got an Intel Core i9-13900K which has its P cores running at 5.7 GHz, E cores are at 4.6 GHz. For the memory, we've got 32 GB of Team Group's T-Create DDR5-7200 with tuned timings. The motherboard is an MSI Z790 Carbon Wi-Fi. The GPU is an MSI RTX 4090, which runs its core at 3 GHz and has its memory running at 24 gigabits per second. All of our games are stored on Corsair's MP600 Gen 4 NVMe drive. We have our test system running the latest Windows 11 updates and NVIDIA drivers. For our first game, we have Alan Wake 2, and keep in mind all the games were tested at 1080p because we're testing out CPU performance. For our benchmarks, I tested four different configurations for the ring clock at 3500 MHz, 4000 MHz, 4500 MHz, which is the stock clock for the 13900K and 14900K, and then 5000 MHz, which is our OC. So you'll notice from these results for this game, there's not a whole lot going on. Performance across all configurations is very similar. Next is Starfield, which shows a bit of scaling. Performance between the 5000 MHz OC configuration and the 4500 MHz stock config is just 5 FPS for both the average and 1% lows. Pretty negligible if you ask me. Remnant 2 also shows a very similar story overclocking our ring to 5 gigahertz barely improved performance but interestingly you can see how at 3500 megahertz there is a substantial drop in our 1% lows it's around 14% but you don't have to be worried about it as the stock ring clock on the 3900k and 4900k doesn't even run that low now from what I recall I believe Alder Lake CPUs did run their ring clock below 4 gigahertz and I think the 13600k ran its ring clock at around 4 or 4.1 gigahertz. I might be wrong on that, so if you do have one of those CPUs, tuning the ring clock on those older or lower end SKUs might be worth doing. It's really up to you if you feel like the difference is really needed. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart shows it really doesn't care about ring frequency, so let's just move on. The Last of Us Part 1 is a game that scales well with a powerful CPU, and the benefits of running a higher ring clock can also be seen here. Although it's nothing earth shattering, there is a 6% improvement from our slowest configuration to the faster one for the average FPS, and 9% for the 1% lows. Baldur's Gate 3 surprisingly is a game that doesn't really show any tangible benefits to the user running a high ring ratio, which is interesting because this is a CPU bound game. Hogwarts Legacy is a game which shows that you're just fine with running the stock ring ratio, overclocking the the ring to 5 GHz didn't provide any performance boost, though interestingly running the ring at 3500 MHz did make us lose performance a bit. Next we've got Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered, not a whole lot going on here as our average FPS goes up a bit with our ring at 5 GHz and our 1% lows just edge out our stock config, but this is another game where the ring clock doesn't impact performance too much. Cyberpunk 2077 shows good scaling throughout and between our faster config and the slowest one, the average FPS improves by 9% and 
and 8% for the 1% lows. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 2022 was a game that I was expecting there would be some performance improvements, but as you can see between the stock config at 4500MHz and our 5000MHz overclock, performance is basically identical, and the drop off when running the ring at 3500MHz wasn't as severe either. Up next we have Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord, and this is a great game for testing out CPUs. It scales well with multiple cores, and we can see here how it scales pretty well with our faster ring frequency. Between our stock configuration at 4500MHz and our 5000MHz OC, the difference for the average FPS is 3%, and it's the same for our 1% lows. So not a huge difference, but if you compare our fastest configuration to the slowest, we are seeing a 14% margin for the average FPS, and 11% for the 1% lows, which are the largest margins we've seen from all the games we've looked at so far. Forza Horizon 5 shows us it's another game which really isn't impacted by a different ring ratio, and then we have a Plague Tale Requiem, and in this title, nothing crazy going on, performance between the stock configuration at 4500 MHz, and the 5000 MHz overclock configuration isn't anything noticeable. So looking at our 13 game average, we can see that overall, the ring ratio doesn't impact performance in the vast majority of games, at least from the ones I tested. Keep in mind, we are at 1080p, so at 1440p and 4K, where the CPU starts to matter less, then there's really no point in even worrying about the ring clock. And if you've got a 13900K or 14900K, those CPUs are already running their ring ratio at 4.5 GHz, so you're already getting like 99% of the performance from the ring anyway. So the good news here is that there isn't much performance being left on the table. Nothing you need to be stressing about. And along with that, if you have a lower end or older CPU that doesn't run its ring at 4500MHz out of the box, no worries, even if you can get close to that, you'll be fine. There seems to be some hard diminishing returns with raising ring frequency. Alrighty guys, so that's going to do it for this one. A bit of a boring video, but at least it answered a question that was on my mind for a while now. We'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.